Good morning and welcome back to Nanny B's Mission Time. We are on day three of Hudson Taylor. Um, we are learning about him and his call to be, when he was a young boy, to that he was going to be a missionary to China. And yesterday we left off and he is finally on the way, but they're having trouble. Once there was a storm that was, the wind was too much and it was pushing them into the rocks and now there is no wind. And the captain says, we've done all we can do. We just have to wait and see disaster happen. And um, Hudson says, no, there's something else that we can do. So he's on the ship. He's on his way to China. Um, just when the word captain thought nothing could be done to save the ship, Mr. Taylor said, Captain, four of us are Christians. Let each of us go to his cabin and ask the Lord to send a breeze immediately. The captain, who was one of the Christians, agreed. The men hurried to their cabins, knelt down, and prayed. After Hudson had prayed, he was sure God was going to answer their prayers. He ran to the deck officer and said, Let down the corners of the mainsail. What would be the use of that? said the, asked the man roughly. We have asked God to send wind, and it is coming right away. The man swore, I'd rather see it than hear tell about it. But even as he spoke, the corner of the topmost sail fluttered gently. Don't you see the wind is coming? Look, cried Hudson pointedly. No, it is only a cat's paw, a little puff in the breeze, grumbled the officers. Put down the main sail, urged Hudson again. Then the man let, down, let it down as fast as he could, for the breeze had really started. In the nick of time, it filled the ship's sails and they escaped the dangerous rocks. Isn't that amazing? God is just so good. How thankful the men were for God's answer to their prayers. And as the Dumfries plowed along through the waves toward China, Hudson rejoiced. He could trust his great God to care for him anywhere at any time. In England, in China, and even on the sea. At last five months after he left England... Hudson Taylor reached the coast of China. On a cold, foggy day, the Dumfries anchored below Shanghai, and a little while later, Hudson was standing on Chinese soil. He blinked back tears of thankfulness. All around him, in the narrow streets, were bright-colored signs he couldn't read. Nimble, blue-suited working men and wearily, warmly gowned women hurried to and fro. Children played merrily in the dirty streets, and rich Chinese rode along in sedan chairs carried on poles. Hudson watched these dark-eyed, black-haired people curiously. I wish I could begin right away to tell them about the Savior, he thought, but he couldn't. He could not yet speak their language. First, he had to find a place to live. Hold on, let me flip. Um, in a few hours, he found a room with a kind English missionary who lived outside the city. Then for long hours every day, Hudson sat in a chilly room with his patient Chinese teacher and studied Chinese. His tongue ached from saying the strong sounding new words. His eyes got tired trying to read the peculiar picture writing. And when he tried to remember all the unfamiliar words and sounds, his head often throbbed. Learning Chinese was hard work. At times it was even discouraging. But how thrilled Hudson was when he could finally speak enough Chinese to be understood. Eagerly, he began to visit villages and towns. He tried to tell the people about the Lord Jesus. Sometimes he went visiting and preaching with another missionary. Other times he traveled alone or with a Chinese helper. He rented a houseboat to take him up and down the wide Yangtze River. By boat, he could travel many miles up the creeks and canals that flowed into the river. Along these streams, bordered by drooping willows, were thousands of old walled villages and cities. In these villages and cities lived millions of people who worshipped ugly idols. These people had never heard of God's Son, our Savior. With him on his boat, Hudson took baskets of food, a small stove, and blankets. He needed the food to he he needed the food and stove to prepare his meals. And the blankets kept him warm on the hard beds of boards. He also took along a bag of medicines and doctor's instruments. And he had hundreds of tracts, gospels, and New Testaments to give to those who could read. 
the boat would be pulled upstream to a town by Hudson's helpers. Then he would ask God to tell him, no, sorry, then he would ask God to help him tell the people in that place about the only true God. He would load himself down with bags of medicine, tracts and books, and head into town. If the town was close, he walked to it. But if not, he hired a squeaky, bumpy wheelbarrow taxi to take him there. In many of the villages, no one had ever seen a foreigner. Sometimes the people were afraid of Hudson. They would run and hide. In other towns, noisy groups of chattering children and grown-ups gathered around and stared at him. What queer clothes he wore. And how strange that his hair was short, curly, and sand-colored instead of long, straight, and black like theirs. Yet many crowds of people listened gladly to Hudson, as, to Hudson tell about his God of heaven who loves and forgives sins. Thousands who could read received tracts and New Testaments. They bowed low and said, thank you, thank you. And many people welcomed his medicine for their sickness and pain. But Hudson was not welcomed everywhere. One rainy day, he and another missionary were on their way to a city called Tungchow. With bags of tracts and books, they bounced and splashed through the mud and rain on wheelbarrow taxis. On the road, they met a kind-looking man who signaled them to stop. Don't go into Tungchow he warned. It is a wicked city. The rough soldiers will surely throw you into jail or kill you. Should they turn back? What would you have done? Hudson and his friend thanked the man for his warning, but they kept going. The people in this wicked city need to hear about the only one who can save them from their wickedness, they said. Near the edge of Tung Chow, they hopped off the wheelbarrows and began to walk. But before they got to the city gate, a big, fierce-looking, drunken soldier ran up and grabbed Hudson's friend. Quickly, a dozen others surrounded them. The soldiers began to hit and kick Hudson and his friend. One of them seized Hudson by the hair and almost choked him to death. Let's kill them, shouted a few soldiers. No, we must take them to the Mandarin, a Chinese leader, argued others. The cruel soldiers beat, kicked, and dragged the missionaries up one street and down another until they reached the Mandarin house. Hudson and his friends were bruised, aching, and dirty. They learned they leaned against a wall, gasping for breath. And still they tried to tell the soldiers and the people about the Lord Jesus. After some delay, the missionaries were ushered into the presence of the Mandarin. He was dressed in a shimmering silk robe and wore a cap of blue jeweled button. Politely, he listened as Hudson explained why they had come. He graciously accepted the New Testament from Hudson. Then the most surprising thing happened. The Mandarin ordered tea served to the missionaries, and instead of putting in th them into jail, he gave them permission to preach in his city. When they left, he even sent men with them to see that they would have no more trouble. So the tired missionaries walked about wicked tongue chow, preaching and giving out God's word in peace. When they got back to their boat that evening, they praised and thanked the Lord. They knew he had kept them from being killed or put in jail. What exciting and dangerous adventures Hudson had on his boat trips. In still other villages, people threw mud and sticks at him. They called him a foreign devil and tried to chase him out of town. On the rivers, there were the river bandits and smugglers to watch out for, and some cities along the river were at war. Hudson was always in danger of being kidnapped or put in jail or being beaten or even killed. But he didn't let these things stop him. He trusted God to protect him and went right on preaching in village after village. After preaching in a certain town, um, one day, Hudson returned to his boat tired and hungry. He sat down uh, for his supper of rice and duck eggs. He, his small Chinese helper watched him eating with chopsticks. You eat like we do, said his helper. You speak our language, but you don't have a Chinese haircut and clothes. Why don't I, wondered Hudson. The more he thought about it, the better he liked the idea. If I could become as nearly like the Chinese I can, it could help me to win them for Christ. So Hudson got a Chinese haircut. First, he had the front part of his head shaved, and after that, he dyed the rest of his hair black and fastened a long black cue to it. He put his short breeches in a loose shirt jacket. He pulled on scratchy calico socks. Next, he squeezed his feet into flat pointed slippers. Last, he slipped on a wide sleeved silk robe. Hudson's 
feet complained about the new shoes, but the clothes were more comfortable than in his English suit. Now people on the street did not notice that he was a foreigner. When he preached, they did not stare and talk about his weird clothes. They listened to his words, and as they be and they began to invite him into their homes. When Hudson visited the big island of Suming, the people invited him to live in one of their cities. They offered to rent him a house. Hudson was delighted to move into a Chinese home of his own. In it, he was kept busy from morning till night. During the day, he treated sick people and told them of the Savior who could heal their hearts from sin. Evening, he taught his neighbors God's word. Eagerly, they listened. Some of them, like Chang the blacksmith and Song the businessman, believed in the Lord Jesus and became joyful Christians. For one week, two weeks, five, six happy weeks, Hudson lived in his new home. Then there was trouble. Suddenly, Hudson received notice that he had to leave the island. Why? A few doctors and druggists had become jealous of him. He treated more sick people than they, and he had better medicine. Secretly, they complained to the government officials, and the officials said Hudson must leave. Hudson was upset, and his Chinese friends were sad, but there was nothing he could do about it at that time. He had to go away. With a heavy heart, he closed the house, said goodbye to his friends, and sailed down the river. Where could he go now? Why had this happened just when things were going so well? Hudson didn't know. He didn't know that God had a special surprise waiting for him. And you're going to find out what the surprise is tomorrow. So here's your questions to make sure you listen. All right, why did Hudson Taylor make the dangerous journey to China? Why did he leave England? Because he believed God had called him to preach the gospel to the to China. Um, next question. In what ways did Hudson travel to the Chinese people after arriving in China? So sometimes he went alone. Sometimes he was with a Chinese helper. So he, they walked. They rode the wheelbarrow taxis. Those were kind of cool. Uh, rented a houseboat um, and, so, and would travel the river. All right, third, name some ways Hudson suffered for Jesus' sake. Well, he had to live in a cold room. He Studying Chinese was very difficult and very hard. He was beaten um, when he was trying to go into the city to preach. Um, they tried to arrest him. He They had river bandits that they had to deal with. He had mud and dirt and sticks thrown at him. And he was always in danger of being beaten or put in jail. So life as a missionary then was not easy. How did wearing strange clothes and having his hair fixed like the Chinese help Hudson in his missionary work? Well, he had the, everybody saw him as a foreigner because he wore his English suit and he had um, his hair cut like, you know, an Englishman. And so that's where their focus was. It wasn't on what he was saying. It was on the way he looked and the way he was dressed. So when he started dressing like Chinese and had his hair done like the Chinese. Then they started not focusing so much on how he looked, but then on what he was actually saying, which was telling them about Jesus. So why did Hudson have to leave his home on the island? He finally had a house. He was finally being accepted. He was finally being able to help the sick people during the daytime and teach God's word at night. Everything was going great. But what happened? Why is he having now to leave? jealousy some of the 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 doctors and druggists got upset and was uh a angry that his medicine was working and theirs wasn't maybe they were losing customers and um so they secretly talked to the officials and made hudson leave and so now we're going to find out tomorrow what that surprise is and so we will see you then have a great day talk to you later